Following the Second World War, a number of the highest ranking members of the Nazi party and the remaining members of Hitler's inner circle were placed on trial for their roles in the crimes of the conflict. As the Allies and the Red Army gained more territory across Europe during 1944 and 1945, it was clear that the true horrors of the Nazi regime went further than just waging war, with concentration camps being discovered that would show the real evils. Jews and other people who were deemed to be racially inferior by the Nazis were persecuted heavily, and the Allies would find the remains of gas chambers and thousands of corpses and bodies as camps such as Bergen-Belsen and Auschwitz were liberated. It was clear that those perpetrators needed bringing to justice, and the most prominent set of trials were those that occurred at Nuremberg. A number of the perpetrators would be sentenced to death, however their sentences were not carried out as effectively as they could have been. Join us today as we look at the botched executions of the Nuremberg trials, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Nuremberg executions took place on the 16th of October 1946, after the Nuremberg trials had drawn to an end. Ten high-ranking members of the Nazi leadership and political structure had been sentenced to death. Hermann Goering, the former head of the Luftwaffe, a man slated to be Hitler's successor at one time, was supposed to join these ten at the gallows, however the night before his execution would somehow obtain a capsule of potassium cyanide and would choose the easier way out the night before. Also Martin Bormann, who was tried in absentia, was also sentenced to death, but his sentence would never be carried out, as it was alleged he would die trying to escape Berlin as the city crumbled at the hands of the Red Army. So even before the executions began, things were not going amazingly for those allied men in charge of overseeing the justice. One man, Bormann, Hitler's gatekeeper, was nowhere to be seen, and the most high-ranking Nazi of them all, Goering, had somehow escaped his justice by taking his own life. The ten sentenced to death were Wilhelm Frick, Hans Frank, Ernst Kautenbrunner, Wilhelm Keitel, Alfred Jodl, Joachim von Ribbentrop, Fritz Saukel, Alfred Rosenborg, Arthur Sesenquart, and Julius Stryker. All ten had been convicted of various crimes, such as crimes against humanity during the conflict, and for this they would pay the ultimate price. The executions would be carried out in the gymnasium of Nuremberg Prison, where the men were being held, and would be performed by the US Army. The executioner was Master Sergeant John C. Woods, and his assistant Joseph Malta, who was a military policeman. They would use the standard drop method, rather than instead using the long drop. With this, much criticism over time has been levelled at Woods for the way in which he performed the executions. In a period of 103 minutes, all 10 of the Nazi war criminals would be executed, but things did not go swimmingly. John C. Woods has attracted much debate over how he performed the executions. The nooses had been constructed by Woods himself. Before the executions took place, it was customary for the executioner and his assistant to meet the condemned in order to make a number of calculations as to the length of drop needed to kill them, and thus snap their necks. Woods during this would make a number of different mistakes when it came to working out how far they needed to fall. Also, his standard drop method meant that it took sometimes between 10 to 20 minutes for the prisoner to die, slowly suffocating to death rather than snapping their neck. Albert Pierpoint, the British executioner, would note how he would perform the executions quicker and with more dignity in this way, and he even would accuse Woods of botching. Pierpoint's methods were specifically calculated to induce an almost instant death, but Woods would not. Another issue with the executions was that the gallows and the trapdoor in particular were not fit for purpose. The gallows had a small trapdoor beneath it, which at times was too small for the men to be dropped into. Also the door had bungs, which did not work properly, and these bungs were supposed to ensure that the trapdoor did not swing back after it was released. This meant that so many of the men as they were falling were smashed in the head by the door. When the images of the executed men were sent to the press, it was noted how many such as Wilhelm Keitel and Wilhelm Frick had bloody marks on them from the door. Some do claim today that the executions of those at Nuremberg were not performed as they should have been, and some even allege that Woods botched them on purpose to ensure maximum pain. By using a short rope, it was claimed that this did prevent instant death, 
and the small trapdoor would inflict damage and pain on the way through. The executions were not clean kills. Jürgen von Ribbentrop, Hitler's foreign minister throughout much of his time as Führer, would go first to his death shortly after 1am. He entered the gymnasium and climbed up the stairs of the gallows, and his final words as a black hood was placed over his head were, God protect Germany, God have mercy on my soul. My final wish is that Germany should recover her unity, and that for the sake of peace, there should be an understanding between East and West. I wish peace to the world. As a trapdoor fell open, von Ribbentrop, the once proud foreign minister, would be hanged, and was left swinging from the noose for 14 minutes, taking him almost a quarter of an hour to die. He must have been moaning and writhing around during this time, but the executions and botches would continue. The second prisoner to face the noose and woods was Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel. Fourteen minutes after Ribbentrop was dropped, Keitel would enter the room and would ascend to the gallows. His final words outlined how more than two million soldiers went to their deaths for the fatherland before me, and that now he followed his sons, all for Germany. The drop that was supposed to kill Keitel was insufficient, and did not have enough force that was generated to snap his neck. With this, Keitel lay dangling behind the black curtain for a huge 24 minutes convulsing a number of times before he was pronounced dead by doctors. This was a huge length of time for an execution to occur within. The hangings, in fact, were taking so long that there were different pauses between, and many of the men performing the duties even had smoke breaks before the next one. The executions would continue. Ernst Kautenbrunner would be next into the execution chamber, followed by Alfred Rosenberg, a Nazi theorist and ideologist. Hans Frank and Wilhelm Frick would follow, and these six executions were carried out within an hour of the first one beginning. Julius Streicher, a notorious anti-Semite and propagandist, who founded the virulently anti-Semitic newspaper Der Stormer, was next to the gallows. He would make millions from publishing disturbing propaganda against the Jews that helped to spread persecution and hatred towards them. His execution did not go as planned at all, however one must remember what an evil man Stryker was. Stryker entered the execution chamber at 2.12am and was brought in whilst being manacled. His hands were bound and the small man in a threadbare suit shuffled up to the scaffold. He glanced around the room, with his eyes focusing on a number of the witnesses and his hands were tied around his back. The guards guided him towards the number one gallows on the left of the entrance and he walked towards the steps. As the guards stopped him for his identification, he screamed Heil Hitler. It took the guards back, and the guards asked him for his name once more, and Stryker responded with, You know my name well, before saying his name. As he reached the platform and climbed to the stairs, he cried out, Now it goes to God. He was pushed up the last two steps towards the hangman, with the rope in his hand. The rope was being held back against a wooden rail by the hangman. Stryker then turned once again to the witnesses and uttered an anti-Semitic slur before an officer said, ask the man if he has any last words. Stryker then replied with, the Bolsheviks will hang you one day. The black hood was then placed over his head and Stryker was placed over the trap door. With this the trap door then opened with a loud bang and he went down kicking. The rope snapped tight when his body fell and he was left swinging wildly. Groans could be heard from behind the concealed curtain inside the scaffold. He did not have a death that was quick, and it's said that he may have dislodged the hangman's knot from its ideal position. Executioner Woods would then go and see what was happening, and disappeared behind the curtain. It's assumed that to put a stop to the groaning, and to stop the rope from swinging, he grabbed the swinging body and pulled down on it, strangling Stryker to death. Following Stryker's botched execution, Fritz Saukel, Alfred Yodel and Arthur Seth and Quart were then executed by Woods at the gallows. After the final execution had taken place, the body of Reich Marshal Hermann Goering was brought into the gymnasium and shown to the witnesses. It was important that the public saw that Goering had taken his own life to prove that the final defendant condemned was dead. Woods would later state of these executions, I hang those ten Nazis and I am proud of it. I wasn't nervous, a fellow can't afford to have nerves in this business. I want to put in a good word for those GIs who helped me. They all did swell. The way I look at this hanging job, somebody has to do it. 
I got into it kind of by accident years ago in the States. Woods himself had previously in 1930 been court-martialed from the US Navy, being diagnosed with constitutional psychopathic inferiority. He was also previously accused of botching executions of many US servicemen before he arrived at Nuremberg. Before he did receive the job as a hangman, he also had no experience in the role. All of those who were sentenced to death at Nuremberg and subsequently executed after the war were found guilty of the horrific crimes against humanity, an act of waging wars that millions suffered within. Despite the fact many of these executions were botched by John C. Woods, it's clear to see that those Nazis did deserve their fate. One thing that's interesting though is why John C. Woods got the job to execute these high-profile men when there were certainly more experienced people fit enough to do the job. For example, Pierpoint, who would execute many of those sentenced to death during the Belson trials. The Nuremberg executions did provide many, though, with a sense of justice that these men who caused so much suffering across Europe and the whole world would finally meet their fate. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.